Yeah. All right. We are rolling now. Rolling. No issues. Allegedly. <laughs> Squeak. We're good. Squeak. Okay. Yeah. I'm done squeaking. I'm close enough. Cool. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Squeaky chairs, all that. Sweet. All right. Well, Lori, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's uh, with much confusion and disorganization, we finally made it together. <laughs> this much. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, so, okay. So you're from Florida, right? Uh, yes. Newly from Florida. Newly from Florida. Transplant out of Colorado oh, okay. to Florida about a year, a little over a year ago. Awesome. So how did you ironically just end up in Wichita like two weeks after I messaged you to be like, hey, we should record a show? I know. You're like, hey, what do you ever get in this part of the country? Uh, I do. I have business out here and I've had business out here in uh, McPherson area. So flying in and out of Wichita uh, usually twice a year. Mm. And, and since it's been about four or five years now. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So what, what kind of business do you have in Wichita? Uh, it's or, a, I mean, McPherson. McPherson, yeah, yeah, I know, right? It's one of those things. Uh, it's a refinery plant. Oh. Uh, yep, so it's a refinery, and I go in there, and uh, it's mostly with the maintenance crews that are there, but I teach them how to move in ergonomics kind of stuff. Yeah. Hopefully have them not hurting too much at the end of the day and so they can go play hard. That's Okay, that's cool. So, all right, that's just a good place to start. Tell me like just all about your business. Like I know from what I've seen on Instagram, I know kind of your bio here and all that, but tell me really what your business is because it's so unique and interesting and cool. It is. Well, and I'm a little bit partial to it, but <laughs> it just so happened to take shape really well um, out of being a strength coach and a massage therapist. I found out later in life that the knowledge that I have fits under safety and ergonomics mm -hmm. in industry world. And uh, once I learned just what makes our country move forward, uh, I, I was hooked. And the fact that I can work with people. So mostly we do training, consulting uh, for ergonomics is technically what it is, but I want people to move better and feel better at work and at home. And so it just so happens that it, it saves the company money because people aren't getting injured and it helps the workers actually like enjoy their lives more, build, be more resilient to what they're doing because there's a ton of work mm -hmm. <laughs> that goes into the trades. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because that's something that we talk a lot about on the show is health and fitness in the trades uh, because your body is what makes your money whenever mm -hmm. you're in the trades. If, if you break an arm, if you break a leg, if you throw your back out, you cannot work. So you have to be strong and you have to be willing to work until later in life, you know, I hate whenever I hear and myself included, I mean, I've had some, some back injuries and stuff like that in recent history probably could have been prevented had I taken better action towards it. But a lot of people in their twenties, thirties, forties will be like, man, I can't hardly move anymore. My shoulders are blown. My back's blown. Everything's yes. just done, but your business is focused on fixing that. Yeah. And on the preventative side of things mm -hmm. for sure. Cause there, there are a lot of, I mean, no one wants to get into the workers' compensation end of things right. because it's not a great successful program. And there's always going to be like a few people who are like, oh, sweet, I get, you know, majority of my pay and I get to hang out on my couch all day because I'm hurt. Or, But in the trades, I find that's rare mm -hmm. because if you're in the trades, you really like working and you're good at what you do and you're skilled. So you want to keep working and feel valuable to do that. So we try to prevent it um, in the way of being more physically resilient to what you're going to put it through. Yeah, people in the trades do not like the whole, the whole people have been paid to sit at home and they don't want to be like during COVID, it was always, oh, everybody's been paid to sit at home, take unemployment. Well, people in the trades go crazy doing that. Totally. You know, they don't, they don't want to sit at home. They want to be working and active and moving and, doing stuff and this keeps them going because especially now so many people can't afford to retire right so they've got to work an extra five ten years than they thought and that's ah, just so important uh well and it's huge well and i can't tell you how many times i've heard um i'm just gonna like i'm like your knee bugs you He's, they're like yeah i'm just gonna wait till i retire and get surgery i'm like no <laughs> I'm like no there's so many things that you would do um, but it's just hasn't been introduced. You know, there's corporate wellness programs all over the place that are like, you know, we're going to have a fitness center in the office or we'll pay for your gym membership. And 
It's really good in controlled environments. We specialize in high hazard, uncontrolled, working in boilers on top of, underneath of, where, where there's not a great way to do things. And so my goal is to help arm the worker with, hey, maybe there's some preparation that you can do, a little warm up, a little stretching. Uh, maybe you can work in a little bit better position. And if all of those go to hell, then we have recovery. And what can you do afterwards and kind of get them in that mentality of they have some power to do something about it. Yeah. So it's like physical therapy, but preventative. And then also I've got something bugging me. Let's, let's nip, nip it in the bud, not, yes. not wait years and years. Yeah. And, and that takes a little bit of, uh, especially someone who's kind of old and stubborn, if something has been bugging them to kind of pull out the information of really how long has it been bugging you? What can we do this? Because, you know, tough guy attitude is out there. But, and I don't want everyone to be like hypochondriacs and be like, oh, I bumped my elbow today. Um, <laughs> I want them to just pay attention to the things that are annoying enough. You know it's limiting your work and maybe stuff at home that there's a lot that you can do to exactly nip that in the bud. Yeah, I can't tell you how many guys I've seen that either limp around uh, and have for years or like uh, last year I was, I was deer hunting, but I was with a bunch of, you know, blue collar guys and they were like, they were like having a contest to see who could raise their shoulder the furthest. <laughs> they were like, anymore, no. I can't get my shoulder past here, you know, raising it like halfway up. Another guy's like, yeah, I can, I can get mine to here. But, you know, they couldn't like, like doing this, just raising their hand in the air was not an option. No. And there was another guy that I was talking to and uh, he was like, yeah, for years, I couldn't move my head up like this. He goes, anytime someone told me to look up, I had to turn my whole body Oh yeah, <laughs> and he goes. I thought it was that that was normal for like ten years. I did that. He goes. I didn't realize I had movement issues. Right, and that that's what I really hope to like aha moments of. This is movement issues. You should not feel like that just because you do the work that way. Granted, there's going to be there's always going to be soreness and fatigue, and work has to happen. Work has to get done. But there's a certain level of not normal that needs to be, um, needs some awareness for, and that, and then just take it back to, can you be a little more, um, healthy fit and feel the differences as you go forward into work? And once they feel it, they're really, it's a way easier, um, job for me because they're like, oh yeah, so what do I do for this or that? Or all the other, um, questions that come up, but there's still the old and stubborn out there. And I think that's my biggest frustration, even this past week. Um, and we go through the whole um, maintenance staff, and there's always going to be a percentage that really don't care about their health and well-being. And I find it frustrating and interesting at the same time. I'm like, really? Like, you know, you, if, if you're hurting and at work and you can't do the stuff you want to do at home, uh, I don't know how that can't frustrate someone. I don't get that either. Uh, Ken Rusk, he, he came on the show months ago, and he did a great breakdown. He goes, he goes, dude, you've got to prioritize it because he goes, he said, think about, he said, if, if somebody told you that you could make a million dollars if you just took care of your health better, you'd do it, right? And he goes, your average tenured guy that's been in the business for a while, he's, he goes, let's say you're making $100,000 a year, give or take. But he goes, if you're making around 100000 a year, you're a skilled employee, labor, uh, whatever your position might actually be. He said, over 10 years, that's a million dollars. And he said, so if you have to get out of the game at 55 years old because your body's just shot and you're unfit to work, he's like, now you, it's harder for you to retire. He goes, but if you work till you're 65, that's another million dollars. That's what your health can be. That's for. a great way to put it. I really like that analogy. Mm -hmm. and, and that might help for some of the young and bulletproof that come in that, you know, don't feel any problems right now. However, if you stay on top of your game on that, then you can definitely earn more millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just such a simple little thing like that. And okay. So I want to back up a little bit. How did you specifically get into this because it's again it's so unique like i'm glad to see somebody doing it but how did you get into doing this it was uh, it was fate really it was something to where uh i was 
our family moved around a lot. Uh, had some kids born in San Diego area, and then my mother-in-law got sick, and she was in Colorado. We went to stay with her. We just kind of hopped around. There was a Canadian company that um, does a little bit of the same injury prevention work, mm -hmm. and they sought me out, and I was kind of like, oh, this is really cool stuff, and um, ended up there are other companies that do this. It's just not well known. We have our own weird, I'm going to say weird, kind of funky take on everything. But in safety and ergonomics land, there are companies that are out there to do that. Canada is actually really good at their injury prevention. I believe that. Um, they're better at certain things, right? You'll hear pros and cons to all their systems. However, it's something to where... <sighs> It fell in my lap, really, because my husband was uh, in between jobs and uh, the company was kind of like, I can't find an American company that does this sort of thing. And so I was like, hey, let's start one. And my husband helps me run the back end of things. Oh, nice. So is it just you or do you have employees or how does that work? I don't have employees, but I have subcontractors. Gotcha. And so, and it's to a point, we don't place full-time people there. Other like competitors, they have, they'll place full time people at a location because mm -hmm. it's controlled environment sort of thing. So the people that um, work for us are subcontractors and they already have their own gigs usually. And it's a great side hustle for them. Yeah. That so, makes yeah. Sense. And working to scale it and grow it now. Hmm. So you were in the strength and conditioning side of things and then you kind of made the switch at some point to kind of start doing this. Yes. Specifically. Yes. Just it was brought to my attention that um, manual um, lifting and moving and handling is what it's called in ergonomics world is a thing. And so I was like, that's exactly what I know and how to watch people move. And then there's another angle of what we do uh, more than just training is more individually based, something they call it early intervention. But you're intervening early when all those aches and soreness are small mm -hmm. and that's where the massage therapy and the massage therapist in me goes to work because massage therapy is something that's in uh, OSHA language is a first aid tool. It's not medical treatment. So mm. in OSHA, there's a hard line between medical treatment and first aid. Oh. And the fact that massage therapy is something like first aid, then it doesn't have um, repercussions of jacking up people's uh, workers' comp insurance and hmm. things like that. So then that's more of an individual basis, and we can do that virtually as well, which I got to thank COVID for. A lot more people are more comfortable kind of just doing a telehealth sort of appointment and being like, my back's really bugging me. And we like to go through education of like how the body works, the muscles. And a lot of times people just need the education of, you didn't break your back. You don't have, you know, something pinching on, unless you just fell off of, <laughs> I don't know, if it's not emergent and you didn't just get hit by a car, yeah. those back strains that feel wretched um, aren't emergent usually. Yeah, and so that's something I learned. So I went and, uh, I like I said, I got a really bad back injury like four years ago. Uh, and I actually just retweaked it the other day. Uh, I got some stuff for you. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I might need to set up one of these telehealth appointments. Right. <laughs> um, I went to, um, his name's uh, Aaron Horshig uh, out of St. Louis, Squat University. Yes, he love is, him. Yeah, he's awesome, right? Yes. And I never even considered the fact that, like, okay, so before I went to him, I went to, I just went through the, the medical train, right? Um, I went to my primary care physician, and he goes, yeah, you need to go to physical therapy and you need to get an MRI and you need to get all these x-rays and you need to go to a neurologist. So I went to just regular old physical therapy and it sucked. I'm at the time 21, 22 years old. I mean, absolutely best shape of my life. Looking great, feeling great, strong. And I'm next to a 70 year old woman doing the same exact exercises, just textbook exercises. They say, oh, you have a slip disc and this, whatever. So then Protocol. I go... Yeah, exactly. Yep. Then I go to a neurologist. And my dad, um, he's a work comp attorney, so he knows all the best doctors in the state. So, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, ironic we're talking about uh, to totally. know, work comp stuff. Um, so he goes, you need to go to this doctor. He goes, he's the best. He's the best neuro neurologist in the state. Well, what does he say? Uh, 
Yeah, it's weird to see an injury in a guy this young, but, uh, you know, short of surgery, there's not much we can do other than maybe just injections or something. No. Yeah. So I go and I get the injection. And it's like a 15 minute appointment. You know, it's just like you're in, you're out, you're gone. He, yep. doesn't, he doesn't look, he just looks at your x rays and your MRI gone. Okay. Well, so push, I mean, short, long story short, spend thousands of dollars, doctors, x rays, and MRIs, all that stuff. The same thing everybody goes through. And a lot of guys end up doing the surgery. And I said, I don't want to have surgery because I know a lot of people who've had surgery and it didn't help because that's not truly what's causing the pain is, is your slip disc or whatever. And so then that's whenever I just got on YouTube or whatever and found, <laughs> right? a, and found a Aaron Horsig and, and Stuart McGill and all those guys oh, and started yeah. just learning from them and their videos and their content and learning that actually figure out how, how to move and does this hurt? Does this not hurt? And re, relearning how to move your body around to where you're not tearing all that up. Yes. And that, and that's exactly what we do with the workers is majority of the education, like be okay. Like testing your range. I think too often we're just stuck in like this hurts pain means damage. Don't move. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, not the case in so many things. Pain doesn't necessarily mean tissue damage or anything's going on. Um, I have a friend, you'll love um, Perry Nicholson, Dr. Perry Nicholson. He's um, stopped chasing pain on his um, socials. He's amazing hmm. as far as, you know, pain. He says pain is a request for change. Something's not right. So mm -hmm. then trying to figure out what's not right and how can you get more balanced, you know, flexibility and strength wise. Yeah. And I think that's something that, on the strength hit of stuff, you know, I don't want everyone working in the trades to think that they need to have like six packs and pull up gains and all these sorts of things. However, a lot of times strength balance is what people need. And I, and oftentimes people who have physical work think they are physically fit, but I know a lot of times <laughs> that mm -hmm. that's not the case as well, right? Living on gas station, uh, convenience store food is not going to help that as well. But to come in with that physical component of just education. And yeah, I love Aaron and all his stuff as well. Just how he explains it and goes through it. His social media is amazing. Yeah. Well, and that's the biggest thing to blue collar workers is they say, well, my back hurts, but I've got no other option. I've just got to keep shoveling because this is, this is the only thing I know to make a dollar. Right. And, and, but you can relearn how to move your body to where that doesn't hurt so bad. Or you can take action small and I would say small changes over time, like nothing I did with Dr. Horshig was, was revolutionary. N none of it was reinventing the wheel. It was just, okay, here's these movements. What hurts, what doesn't hurt. And here's some just exercises you can do at home in your garage with no special equipment to get pain free throughout the day. Definitely. And, and a lot of blue collar people need that. For sure. And so he probably, the Stuart McGill, like big three, you mm -hmm. know, exercises. And I mean, there's... It doesn't take a lot of time. No. And you are, you know, a lot of them are going through work. Um, a concrete finisher is one of my best examples of um, kind of intervening early enough that um, it elbow things, and specifically like tennis elbow is usually there, well, for many people in the trades because they're doing a lot of tool work. Tennis elbow on the outside of the elbow is very common. Mm -hmm. um, and there's concrete finishers that I've worked with before. Hands-on, like massage-wise, it just... It, it kicks it up uh, a couple of notches. Like you can just get, skip a few steps because they're going to work it's, and it's two steps forward, one step back, but it's not two steps forward, three steps back. Uh, so the massage wise has to come in there. Yep. Um, we just lost a camera. Oh. Both cameras. Mine's What's green now. What the heck just happened? Oh, there it is. Now it's back. Mine is. Mine's flash. Ah, uh, it's red. There you are. That was odd. Okay. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Talking about concrete finishers and just how sometimes a little hands-on massage work is great. However, there's also some cool tools out there that someone can use on themselves, but it, it takes a, it gets you a little ahead of the game mm -hmm. because work is going to still happen no matter what it is, whether your back's bugging you, your elbow or your knee or whatever it is. There's just that, um, just trying to help move forward bit by bit, baby steps. And mm -hmm. like you were saying, little small things are going to go a long way. You just sometimes have to be patient with it um, and then move from there. So as long as they have the education that like 
they're not broken. You're not going to keep doing damage by continuing to work and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's so important because, like I said, the medical system sucks. I mean, it does. these blue-collar guys, they go to the doctors and they spend a lot of money, like I said, and, and racking up medical bills. and Or pills. Yeah, or pills. Exactly. And I, I've got a good buddy that he does that. He was a dozer operator for years at a landfill, and he messed his back up, and now he's in more of a inspection role. And his back's still messed up, and he just... That, that's how he was treated was just surgery after surgery and pills. And he hasn't done a fusion yet, but he's done a lot of other things. And finally they were like, yeah, we're just going to burn your nerves. Ugh, so you don't right. feel any pain. Yeah, let's just, <laughs> let's just cut off that part of your body. So you don't have to feel it anymore. It's essentially what you're doing yeah. when you, you know, stop the nerve and then it can create a whole other list of problems. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, um, the group that I'm lucky to be a part of, uh, Another thing that kind of fell in my lap is um, to be a part of the rock tape instructor group. Have you heard of rock tape? It's that kinesiology tape. Uh, I've seen it on your, your Instagram. Yeah. That's all I know about it's it. It's just a brand of kinesiology tape out there like K-tape or kinesio tape or all the things that uh, I love them because they have a whole education behind their product and they really want to educate people on how to use it. It just so happens that in uh, work world, it's a first aid treatment that you don't have to, you know, be anyone special to put it on, but it's really great and helpful. Anyway, instructor group is amazing. Um, chiropractors, physical therapists, athletic trainers, massage therapists. Um, it's at least 50 here in the U S and then there's 50 others globally that we get to put our brains together occasionally and, uh, learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And it's really just helped me, um, I mean, I've kind of always thought outside the box, but know that the medical system and protocol channels you so much into certain ways of doing things. And let's look at the whole person and the whole body, not just the knee, not just the back. It's oftentimes something different. And if we can help someone with that education, like, hey, maybe your knee hurts because your feet are bothering you. Let's work on your feet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that uh, the way we set up our telehealth things and those sorts of um, wellness is to be more balanced with your body and you don't get stuck in the protocol of pills and ice and down the road of not helping you get back to work. Yeah. And that's something crazy too is, is a lot of people don't think about their body as a whole. They think, oh, my knee hurts. That's it. I mean, it's just my knee hurts, but it could be your ankle or your foot bothering you. Exactly. And I, I'm going to, so the story this week, since it was a refinery, uh, and I've been there a couple of times and I know that, um, one of the things selfishly, it's a little bit of exercise to put in my week is to climb to the top of the coker. So mm -hmm. there's, I don't know, it's essentially probably 10 stories. Or it, more. I knew, I knew my, I just got to cut you off. I knew my wife should have come because she is a refinery nerd. Oh. So you're talking about oh my gosh. cokers and alkies and this and that. Yes. She is all about that stuff. <laughs> oh, we would have a ball. Oh yeah. my gosh. Then we need to connect for sure. Definitely. Okay. So she'll totally know what I'm talking about. And they're not the same height in all the refineries, but this one has maybe 10 stories of stairs mm -hmm. and then it has maybe 120 more feet of ladder cages. And so I'd been up there before. I was like, that was my goal this week. I'm like, Hey, tell me we have a moment to, you know, go out and do the coker. Partially for me, but also, you know, I hear the complaints from the guys. They're like, I just did the ladders and this hurts or that hurts and shoulders. And so what I love about it is then after climbing and then once I get to the ladders, I don't do ladders a lot. So here I am and I get a little shaky in my feet and I'm like, my calves are being worked how they never have. My grip is being worked how it never has climbing on all the ladders. But then I get to come down and be like, ah, oh, that's probably why so-and-so's knee was bothering them because mm. the calf is overworked. And then it just, I learn by doing things. So it helps me with my perspective to be like, roll on your foot and work on your calf. It's not your knee. <laughs> like all of a sudden all those things click in and then hopefully that's helpful for someone else moving forward or like elbows. That's why your elbow hurts. Mm -hmm. And we played around with switching grips on climbing ladders. So if anyone else climbs ladder cages on the way up, it felt okay to do like a reverse chin up grip 
for me. It For me, it felt safe. For um, my handler, as I call him, because <laughs> I kind of have to be babysat in the refinery. Understood, yeah. To not touch things that I shouldn't touch. <laughs> um, he was like, oh, that's weird. But I'm like, weird? But you could still do it if you practice? He's like, yeah, probably. But on the way down, we were both like, no, overhand all the way, because uh, you, know, you don't want to. It's what you're used to. Right? You don't want to let go. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Uh, that's where my brain is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so what are just some practical ways that, that people start figuring out, like, I mean, obviously we've talked a lot about the importance of this and kind of just how you evaluate and stuff like that, but all right, a guy, I'm sure plenty of guys that are listening have been like, yeah, my shoulders are shot, yeah, my knees are shot. All right, get to the good stuff. How do we, I know, right? how do we start the, assessing this? What's the magic <laughs> pill? What's the yeah. thing to do? Well, I think in broad language, it's... It's all about prepping your body, maybe working in better postures, and then recovery. And in terms of, re- well, in prepping, I just mean like some sort of full body stretch or movement, warm up your body, go in all directions. We're a little, um, we update people's stretch and flex programs. I love that construction does stretch and flex. I think that's cool. But when I came in from my sports medicine world, saw it, I'm like, cool, they're moving beforehand, but it's, it's dated, it's 80s, it's stretch and hold. It's static holding. Mm -hmm. We really need to do more dynamic movements, not holding movements. And do the movements that you're probably going to be doing at work, just maybe smaller. So that's the prep, stretch, flex sort of thing. The recovery, the biggest advice I can do is think about the opposite posture than you're working in. Mm -hmm. So like rod busters or people who are tying rebar, they're bent over all day, right? So I'm like... You shouldn't be bending over and stretching your hamstrings more after you're done. You should be laying down flat or opening up your back the other way Mm. as a correction. So to always think of, you know, if your arms are forward all day, if you're welding, if your head's forward and you have really crappy posture all the time, then the opposite is going to be open up your chest, you know, looking up. And even doing that like every hour is super helpful so your body doesn't get used to crappy posture. Gotcha. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And that's the biggest thing. And I mean, we have resources for people that they can look up the specifics of things, but just overall guidance, it's think of the opposite posture that you've been in too long and try to strengthen in that other direction. Okay. So it's funny you say that because actually at work, we had a a plant operator the other day. Um, He was talking about how whenever people walk into the scale house, He's like, yeah, I always look this way, and now my, I'm starting to kind of get a crick in my neck from looking left, he said. And he jokingly said, I should just move my my computer monitor over here so that way I'd be looking this way every time somebody walks in. And, and that's exactly right. And then somebody's like, ah, just so you can tear up the other side. He's like, yeah, I don't know. But ah. it's like, but what you're saying is that's actually legit. It is totally legit. So, huh. and it, sometimes it's just, it's not necessarily a huge strength difference because mm-hmm. it doesn't take strength to look the other way it's more of like a neurological thing your Mm -hmm. body doesn't it's like um just movement habits yeah and you're resting the other half like you're like if i'm looking this way now you're resting this muscle yeah but it doesn't take you don't have to be exact and be like oh my gosh i've looked 50 times to the right i have to look 50 times to the left no it thankfully you just have to at least do some in both directions so your body knows that you know neither one is a home base mm-hmm. um, and don't get good and strong on one side and really weak on the other. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. So, uh, all right. I mean, for example, we have a lot of mechanics that yep. listen to the show. Um, one of our bigger demographics is mechanics. Uh, mm-hmm. So let's say a, a mechanic who's, who's hunched over, like you're saying, or he's crawling into some mechanics, man, especially field mechanics. They get in some weird positions. Yeah. They're on under the heavy stuff equipment. And they're bent the- over. Like there's one guy I know that I swear he climbs into a giant piece of equipment. Like it's a jungle gym and he's just like a pretzel and the dude's like 70 years old. But how do those guys that are having those problems? I mean, what, what do you say to them that their whole body is being twisted in weird ways. <laughs> right. And probably their whole body hurts as well. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know, start with the squeakiest wheel and kind of go from there on what's going on. There, there's going to be times where there's not um, a great way of doing things. And we've worked with a, a Caterpillar maintenance group before as well. And I've got to see them all up under things. And they're like, we don't have cool things to lift that motor underneath there. It just sometimes has to be lifted. Mm-hmm. Um, awareness is a thing I would love uh, if there's possibility of working smarter, not harder, 
asking for help if you do have someone else around and being okay doing that. Mm -hmm. Being like, hey, you know, my back's been bugging me. I know if I lift this by myself, it's going to suck. Can you just help me for a second and lift this where I need it to go? Um, so a lot of times that's the case. But for those mechanics, there's not a great way to do things. Um, I think it's more of a find certain routine of movements, like a push, a pull, a squat, uh, that they can do their own self-assessment on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like how people who have work are uh, company trucks. You're supposed to do a little walk around each time you get in the truck and check what's working, what's not working, so you know if it's broken. I, I like people to try to get in the habit of doing that themselves. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything then that uh, you just recommend? Like you kind of said, get, get some of those dynamic movings, movements going. If you're going to be shoveling all day, do some, you know, kind of twist, get your core warmed up, do all that before you start. I mean, because a shovel, I mean, you get a good shovel material that weighs 10 to 20 pounds and you're doing that all day long over and over. So just for any blue collar job, what's just a good kind of rule of thumb of, hey, you should do this before you even start working? Um, as far as specifics of what you should stretch sure, and yeah. what you should work, I I personally, and this is where our program is a little bit different for our warm up stretch and flex. We call it our mobility program. We add a spinal twist to it on purpose. Mm. Like we have a lunge stance and we go through. It's actually um, altered from old school world's greatest stretch. You know, the P90X days. Oh yeah, right. So, I mean, but if I came in and started doing that with people and be like, put your hands on the floor and we're doing this full lunge, I mean, all the old guys would be like, screw you, I'm going home. Um, so <laughs> I haven't touched the floor or seen my toes in years. <laughs> exactly. So we modified it a little bit and then actually take people through a good posture, spinal twist on purpose. And I know I'm controversial in the ergonomic worlds because ergonomists, they're brilliant in a lot of ways. They can figure out how to engineer out a lot of things, but they're like bending and twisting is dangerous. Mm -hmm. I believe that, I mean, our spine was built to bend and twist and the more that you condition it and be okay doing it, um, then you're better off when you go in. So, cause lower back is so common, mm -hmm. right? And then how often do you take yourself through a twist on purpose as a warm up? That would be probably the one warm yourself up a little bit. So your blood's flowing mm -hmm. and go through, um, a twist from there. And I'd be happy to send out or people can look at, you know, our program and figure out how it works for them and they can use the warm up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Send me that. Uh, and we'll, uh, I'll share it to our social and all that. Um, yeah, that's just so good. I, I love that. And you know, stretch and flex is not, it's becoming a little more common, but I would say most construction companies are still not doing it, which I mean, to each their own, but, uh, I will say, I guess I see different ones, right? Uh, the yeah. ones that are interested in working with us are the ones yeah. that are probably already on the spot. I don't, so yeah, I kind of see the nicer side of things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, if, the, if they're going coming to you, they're saying, yeah, we actually need to do this. But mm -hmm. So as far as a wellness program for a company, like a business owner or something like that that's listening to this going, I don't do any of this, and I don't want my guys getting hurt, where is a good place to start with their crew? I mean, I guess just your, your stretch and flex warm-up uh, that, that you guys do, that kind of program would be... It's a good place to start that. because we do have something. It's not a train the trainer necessarily. We do have a train the leader. Like if you know that you're ready to roll out a warm up program or a stretch and flex program and you haven't ever had one before, then we do work with people on trying to develop something. It's a great place to start because if you can kind of roll that out and they feel better once they're moving a little bit in the mornings, I've heard people, they're like, my guys are listening better. They're remembering things better. <laughs> so it helps their brains also. Um, but if you can get in the habit of that, then it's cool to have the conversations if they have some aches and soreness and stuff going on. Be like, hey, remember that spinal twist move in the warm up? Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that your low back or your hips are bothering you? You should probably make sure you do that part of the warm up. And then mm -hmm. it has conversations. And maybe you could be working differently. And then we can like continue different conversations. So, some we have some clients that do a train the leader program because in construction, it's super hard to get. 15 people in a two hour class. Like the refinery is cool. They're able to do that because they have enough, but construction has so many moving parts that it's very difficult for um, that to happen. So we find leaders, we help roll it out um, in that sort of way. 
and then check in on them. The first time seeing construction guys do physical activity like this is always absolutely hilarious. So I've got two instances that just, I still think about all the time and it yes, cracks please. me up. So <laughs> the first one's pretty, pretty standard. It's normal, but, uh, we, we were doing a wind farm job and we had to do, uh, I, I work in the asphalt business and I was still just a labor running the show, you know, shovel yep. bitch, uh, flag bitch, you know, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Just doing that. Well, we were doing a job building a road on a wind farm and they made us go do a stretch and flex. And it was one of the most entertaining things of my life <laughs> because like, I mean, for me, none of it was hard. I was still in college. I was an athlete playing right. rugby, all that, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> a lot of these guys, Seeing them try to do it was just hilarious. I mean, what did you see? You you know you have something specific that you saw some somebody do that they were just crooked on it or something. Uh, it's or just, some of the guys were way into it, and some of the guys were just kind of half ass like. Mm, mm, mm. But it just some guys were like way too into it, which was hilarious. Or it was just watching them try to touch their toes. <laughs> God, <laughs> right? I mean, because <laughs> some of them would like just kind of squat down. Just some people would barely be able to bend over at all. It's just that one is is especially hilarious. Um, but I don't know, just the whole scene in general, watching a bunch of dudes in hard hats and vests and all that, just trying to do this was funny. It's a, it's a culture that needs to be, you know, built. It's really helpful if it comes top down and bottom up. Mm -hmm. Like if you see the supervisors, foreman, management in the classes, I can't even tell you how much that helps, you know, so they're like, oh, they do care. And yeah, you might feel silly. So what we always tell them, you might feel silly for the first couple of weeks and then all of a sudden you feel better. And a lot of times, most people are going to be like, well, I don't, I don't care if I look silly because mm -hmm. I'm way better when I go home the end of the day. And everyone's going to start at a different spot, right? right. There's going to be more round folks that can't quite touch their toes. And, um, but maybe they're really into it as well. I, there's the gamut of people. Yeah. But you did say you had two stories. <laughs> The other one's hilarious. Please. So uh, in college, we had a construction teacher, and she taught, of course, she taught the hardest classes. Well, everybody was doing anything we could to get extra credit. Well, she is this, like, short woman, big, frizzy, blonde hair, all that. Well, she taught Zumba <laughs> on campus. That was her side gig. She was a Zumba trainer. Yes. And her deal was... If you come at the end of the semester, everybody needs extra credit because everybody was failing her class or had a C or D and was trying to bump it. And you could get a lot of extra credit by going to her Zumba classes. She would give you specific dates of everybody choose this. So it was all construction guys. Most of them are guys that fit the bill of construction worker. They, yeah. weren't, they weren't college nerds or anything like that. So uh, it was, all right, come to the Zumba class. So you show up to the Zumba class and it's all dudes that are, most of them, you know, are bigger guys. Some of them, they're wearing gym shorts for the first time and probably ever. They're just white legs. Yep, and yep. <laughs> just watching all these dudes, you know, they're all wearing their hats. Some dudes just wearing jeans and boots still because that's all they have. That's what they do. That's Zumba. how they roll. <laughs> nice. And then they're just shaking it and going to town and doing the whole class. They actually did the class. Yeah, you had to like, you couldn't just like, go, you couldn't just sign in and just right. stand there. Like she, yeah, she would had to. call you out. Nice. <laughs> nice. So you had to do it. I know. And uh, see, I'd be like, oh, I would do that. You know, I can't do that for most things, but you know, like our mobility t routine, it, you know, there's certain different parts of it that, yeah, people are going to be uncomfortable. We have a single leg balance thing, you know, balance is a really good life skill to have, but some people aren't really great at their balance at first. So yeah, you're going to, you have to check your ego at the door a lot of times. Yeah, we, we all checked our ego at the door that time. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, but, but you do not need like the shiny spandex headband leg warmers to do it either. Right. So I think that's one thing that we're totally moved out of. I mean, 80s, 80s gave us lots of cool things, but I don't think that um, shiny spandex and leg warmers were fabulous. She wore that for the Zumba class. Yeah. She, she was... She was decked out in the 80s garb. And a whole singlet thing. I love to find. I mean, I ask people all the time. I have the 80s aerobics competition um, video uh, stuff that I usually play in my classes. I'm like, if you want this option, you can totally do this option because it works great. But you just have to have the whole like singlet um, shiny outfit. <laughs> so this one is way better than that. Yeah. You know, it's the lesser of two evils after I play that video. Yeah. And everyone's good. 
So what is your typical reaction whenever you first, like whenever you first show up on the scene and you are going to give a class to a bunch of blue collar dudes, how is, what, what is the reaction? I get a lot of lean back in the chair, <laughs> uh, lean back in the chair, closed, uh, like grumpy faces. I remember talking to a bunch of welders and I mean, now I work with pipe fitters and stuff all the time and they just look at me like, you're going to teach me what? Um, <laughs> But I honestly, I learned to love it. I see it as a challenge and um, try to have conversations and meet them where they're at because I learn something with every class that I teach because they are the experts at what they do. And I never want to come in to be like, I'm the health and wellness and movement expert and I'm going to tell you how it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. That does not go over well um, with any sort of management style. No. So... Um, I always come in just humble and knowing that they work hard day in and day out and their bodies are going through some stuff. And if I get to help them with a couple of solutions that help them move better and feel better, it's a win-win on all around and just respecting where they're coming from and not expecting, you know, six packs and pull-ups because I mean, that's hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd have to eat like way too healthy all the time. Yeah. And I, I love that too, because I, I tell blue collar guys like, all right, I go to the gym every day and I tell people all the time, Hey, you really should, you know, do some very, just start. You don't have to go to the gym every day. You're working hard every single day. I mean, you are, you're shoveling, you're raking, you're in the heat, you're in the elements, you're, you're good on physical activity. You're moving, you're walking, you're doing this stuff, but you should really incorporate some just very practical functional movements into your day-to-day -day stuff. And, you know, of course the average response is, dude, fuck you, man. Like I do, you know, like I said, just said, you know, there, I, I work out, I do this. I'm, I'm, I'm out here every single day and I'm, I'm physically exerting myself. And again, I agree with y'all, but some functional movements to get your body prepped, ready, primed and well, and, Balance. Yeah. And balance is really the biggest thing, you know? So a lot of, um, pipe fitters or anybody bent forward, I don't think that push ups and bench press and chest stuff is really going to be useful for them at all. I'm like, no, nah, get in there and at least do your pulls, do some, uh, rows, work the back, mm -hmm. you know, your upper back motion, like really try to make it efficient because yeah, they're out there. They're maybe burning calories, but they're not necessarily. So that's okay. Cool for your heart sometimes. But how often are you pushing it and getting, keeping your muscle? Because mm -hmm. you're working certain muscles, not all the muscles. And that's where we can be balanced and better. One book that um, kind of changed the way I look at a ton of things um, this year was The Comfort Crisis. Hmm. I don't know if you've heard that at all. I haven't. Um, I'm in love with Mike Rowe and he's my boyfriend. And my husband fully knows about that. But <laughs> Um, I watch him all the time and he mentioned this book and I was like, oh, I got to read it. And so I got the audio book. Um, it's by Michael Easter, but uh, it just was a perspective of who we are as humans. And we were built to be, you know, physically fit and out there. And technology is sometimes wrecking that for us. But one of the quotes that came out of it that was an iron eye opener for me even was, um, you know, the more you put yourself through exercise induced discomfort, the um, more death resistant you will be. So, but it kind of works for everything. Like when was the last time you did exercise induced discomfort, right? They've done their work induced discomfort on things, but you know, kind of pushing your cardiovascular, your strength and things like that. That's what being human is and keeps us going and fit because otherwise it's just a slow downhill mm -hmm. on a lot of stuff, which I think people are like, well, it's just the way it's going to be. But if you do make a point every now and again, get really efficient at what you're doing in the gym and the strength moves and whatever you you know need, then you don't have to do it two hours every day. Yeah. No yeah. one has that time. Right. And, and you don't have to, if you work a 12 hour shift, I mean, we're not saying you got to go out and do even 30 minutes worth of stuff. But if you take 10, 15 minutes at the beginning or the end of your day to just move, stretch, or even five minutes here and there throughout your day. Yes. Even two minutes here or there throughout your day. Uh, you, you know, I, I heard something the other day that absolutely baffled me. It said, find, do something intentional for five minutes every single day. If you do it for five minutes, five days a week for one year, that's over 20 hours. 
Awesome. So if you take five minutes to, let's say you're a truck driver and you take five minutes to every day throughout the day, even a minute at a time to just walk a lap around your truck or get or up, three. move around. <laughs> yeah. Or three, <laughs> you know, just get your blood flowing, yep. get your things moving. Or if you're a mechanic, do some shoulder stretches. I mean, I do some shoulder stretches cause my shoulders give me problems every now and then. And, uh, they work the muscles and you know, 30 seconds to a minute or two minutes, then boom, I'm feeling good again. And not so tight and cramped up. Right. And oftentimes you're like, I'm just going to give it five minutes and then it ends up being like 15. Right. You know, it's just that point of getting started Mm -hmm. and then creating a new habit of doing it. And it doesn't have to be long by any means because everyone on a 12 hour shift, but I love finding ways that you can work out at work. Um, There are definitely ways. A lot of people are lifting heavy stuff. How are you lifting it? And, you know, maybe five gallon buckets on each side. You can... Uh, squat down a couple times on it and work your squats. Yeah, I people roll their eyes at me when I tell them that, of course, or you know, hang on the scaffolding at the plant and do a pull up. Safety wise, I'm not totally sure if that's supposed to happen, but you know, <laughs> I'm like hanging, like hanging, like we used to do at the playground on the jungle gym. No one does that anymore. It's really rare, and it's a excellent like for your whole body. Yeah, it just takes all the tension off of everything. Yeah, yeah, and so. Go to the park, go to the playground with your kids. If you got kids, you know, try some stuff. Well, and, and that's my biggest thing too, is let's say you don't even give a crap if you're hurting at work. Man, I can't tell you how many people, and and I'm thankful because I have parents who are 55 to 60 years old, and they are still very active, and they're still like, they can keep up with us in anything we want to do. We want to go on a hike, they're there. We want to, I mean, my mom is probably although there's no gauge, but she's one of the top female bike at bi- bicyclists, uh, cyclists, not bicyclists. There you go. Cyclists. Right? Yeah. Words, uh, in the state. I mean, she is a hoss, awesome. especially for her age. And so that's been the example I've had. But one thing that my mom always says is she goes, whenever I was your age, she's like, my parents could not do any of this stuff. She said they could barely get out of bed. And she's like, so I've made it a goal to stay physically fit for you all so I can keep doing things with you. So if you can't do it for your job or for your employees, employer, do it for your kids, do it for your family, just to keep up with them. Definitely. Or you mentioned you were deer hunting, something like that. You know, all those, that takes a lot of Mm -hmm. physical exertion once you get the deer, right? You got to, I never knew because a lot of the folks at the refinery, you know, deer hunting, we plan trainings around as well. So it's really important. And I didn't know that like, oh, you got to drag that buck, like sometimes a really long way through mm-hmm. a bunch of sticks and things like that takes a lot. And then you don't want to get hurt because yeah. then you can't go back out. And, and then it's bow hunting for these uh, guys mostly. But um, that just, I have a thing on my YouTube channel about, you know, conditioning because it's time for everybody who's going to go into um, bow hunting in deer season. Yeah. Um, that you should condition your shoulders and the pullback of drawing the bow and how you actually should try to do that on the other side, not with your bow, but with a bungee or some sort of strength move because it'll oh. kind of mess with your neck or your shoulder because you're always pulling back in that one direction. Mm, that makes sense. Opposites. That makes sense. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yes. I'm right? So that. everyone needs to get into conditioning um, for bow hunting. Nice. By yeah. doing both sides. Yeah, and climbing in and out of a tree stands physically yes. hard. I mean... I know that I deer hunt, like, uh, one of my good friends who's, he's, I always call him my uncle. I don't know. He's not actually my uncle, but, uh, he's, golly, he's had so many back surgeries the last couple of years. And he's like, man, he goes, it's coming. He said, my time is almost up for hunting. And he goes, I hate it because it's my favorite thing to do. But he goes, I'm just getting to a point. I can't sit still for that long. Yeah. And without just a lot of pain and I can't get in out of a tree stand and get on a four wheeler and. So even to do the things you love later in life, it's, that's why it's important. Right. And I hate to hear that. And that's one thing kind of, um, bringing back around to the network of people that I get to work with. Um, I'm trying to connect and like post it somewhere so I can at least help people. I hear those stories. I'm like, there's gotta be someone good in your area or someone that can then help you move better because there, I'm not the only one out there and there's so many people that can really get to the bottom of things and fix faster, mm-hmm. not in protocol, not, you know, in the box, but that can really help people because I, I hate hearing that. Um, so I no, really you could work. It takes a little more work at that age, right? As you're getting older, but you don't have to be busted and never hunt again and 
all the sort of thing. So I'm, I'm hoping to get better at an online network or at least help people find great professionals. Yeah. Yeah. And they are hard to come by because whenever I first discovered Dr. Aaron Horshig, I was like, I really don't want to drive seven hours to go see this guy. Yep. But it, I couldn't find anybody around here. So that was what I had to do. Yeah. And for some people that travel, cool, they can maybe find someone somewhere else. But we, we really hope to fit people with um, local professionals in their area. And that's usually where my um, uh, staff comes from in a lot of ways. Like we'll have a, a client that has national um, locations and then I can't be everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. So trying to find good people where they're at yeah. is our priority. Yeah. Well, I could talk about this stuff all day long. Know, this is right? just this is like one of my favorite things. I'm a nerd about this stuff, uh, and and it's just so important. And uh, I just want to end it on this that like I know that um, small changes over time. I preach that till I'm blue in the face on this show. So I mean, just find some of these movements, these stretches, and just know that like a couple minutes a day will could potentially save you years of pain for sure. Um, so uh, I just want to finish it on on two just quick questions. One is how do people find you? Um, how do people, you know, get working with you, get set up with you and kind of what does that process look like? Um, so if someone's in the working in the field already, uh, my best contact for training, uh, with the company is the safety professional. So if you have a safety professional at your company, then um, definitely send them my website. It's either balancebio.com or themovementninja.com. Um, they both go to the same location, and it has um, contact there. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn for those folks. Safety people love LinkedIn. Oh, and yeah. so, <laughs> but I love LinkedIn as well for content. If you're on Instagram, the Movement Ninja Lori is where I always put all free content, and hopefully, and I love requests as well. Um, from folks, but um, that's the best bet. So safety pros are the ones that usually bring us in for programs. And then if it's just individual things, I would definitely um, recommend the Instagram or I have a YouTube channel. Um, just search Lori Frederick cool. without the K. Awesome. Sweet. And then uh, my final question that I always ask everybody who's on the show is what is the dirtiest job you've ever had to do? <sighs> See, and again, micro reference because I love him in dirty jobs. That's how I learned about him. I would probably say I didn't actually have to do the job and I didn't do it as income based, but um, I learned what it's like to get inside a boiler at the refinery oh, nice. and climb in there and figure out how to use an impact wrench and see what happens. So I think I did 20 minutes of work, but that was definitely, I mean, got me dirty for sure. And just mentally, that was really hard to get inside a boiler that's uh, uh, very small. Yeah. How hot it was it inside there? Luckily not. They actually had it set up. It was a good uh, confined space setup. They had an AC thing blowing in the other end. So it was actually the coolest place in the refinery that day. Oh, nice. I know, which yeah. doesn't happen all the time. So mm -hmm. I was a little bit country club. Yeah. Well, hey, that's still cool. I mean, and it's what I love about what you do and what you're saying is, is you get into these and you experience the pain and the movements and, and that's great. I, that's so cool to see that you're able to do that. And I mean, what better way to treat somebody than to do what is giving them the issues and, and see what muscles it's working and all that. And Thank you. It gives me a lot of respect for what they do and not just stand out there with my clipboard or something and be like, Oh, well your back's bending this way and that way. And like, I want to, I want to feel it when I can. Yeah. Well, it's like you said about your spinal twist and, and all that, you know, I'm sure that ergonomists or whatever you call them, uh, they, you know, they're probably, you need to stand rigid and tall. Well, yeah, but you ever shoveled before? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Have you had this in your hand before? Yeah. 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 I, I think that that's what a lot of people who, uh, do what you're trying to do in the blue collar world or just a lot of professionals, uh, and that are trying to talk to blue collar people. They, they just don't understand that. Yeah, sure. On paper, that's what you're supposed to do. But, uh, that that's not reality. Right. I don't ever want to be a hypocrite with it. I actually want to, you know, respect them and provide the value. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, I will let you go so you can make your flight. Yes. Uh, I appreciate this and, um, it's been a lot of fun. We'll definitely have to get back together. Uh, especially if you come back to this neck of the woods, cause Wichita is yeah, very we close. Can make it a regular occurrence. That would be really cool. So yeah. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Anytime. Love your podcast. Yeah. And, uh, next time we'll, uh, 
try to get my wife and, and Casey on here as well. Yeah, we could geek out. Oh, yeah. Casey and Victoria are both big into refineries. That's what they do for a living. So okay, cool. They, uh, anytime they are both on the show, they, uh, they talk a lot about refineries. <laughs> and I don't know anything about refineries. <laughs> it takes over. All right. You know. Good. So, awesome. Cool. Well, guys, uh, if you uh, like the show, be sure to uh, uh, listen. Uh, well, to listen. Sorry. I'm like trying to switch cameras and do sound and all that at once. And I'm, I've been really bad at it this show. Uh, but uh, be sure to give us a, a five star review. Follow Lori on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram at Dirty and Driven. Um, you know, five star review helps the show grow. Be sure to share it with a friend who might need some movement and uh, shoot Lori a message if you have questions. Uh, guys, thanks for listening. Y'all are awesome.